Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So a lot of you guys have been asking me about the whole part two of Surviving R. Kelly. If you guys don't know, yes, there is a part two coming out. Last year, we all watched part one. That was one of the most trending topics across social media. Um, you know, everybody has something to say about it. I stated my piece. While I saw that there were some real victims in that case, I saw a lot of attention whores trying to jump on the R. Kelly hate train to distance themselves from fucked up shit that they themselves have done. Let's keep that real. So now, um, the trailer for Surviving R. Kelly Part 2 is out. R. Kelly has been charged with multiple accounts of sexual assault. I have video of you. Come meet me. All right, so you guys just saw the trailer. So now there's a bunch of controversy. If you guys do not know, Drea Kelly, who is R. Kelly's ex-wife, she says she plans on suing Lifetime because she never gave them permission to use her likeness or her image in the part two of the R. Kelly series, and she's really upset. Also, Lisa Van Allen is also upset, too, because she says she wants nothing to do with the part two of the documentary because it's causing nothing but a bunch of stress and angst and all that good shit, okay? I want you guys to go ahead and watch this interview with Drea Kelly on TMZ. Check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. They brought the idea to me. I let them know that in no way, shape, form, or fashion will I be a part of it. Uh, they reached out to my children without my permission. They reached out to my family members without my permission. And then when I brought it to them that I don't want you contacting my children, I don't want you contacting my family, they did it anyway. But what's more important about this is that I'm not happy with the aftercare and how the victims and survivors were handled throughout this entire process, even down to the bomb threat that was in New York. They put us on a bus, transported us back to the hotel, of which we're under our names, no aliases, no security. Then we go off to the airport the next day, no security. What's what's your beef with Lifetime and, and your foundation? It's not a beef, it's the fact that there's no support of the women, of the survivors coming forward, because if this is to be a partnership and to bring awareness and we're standing in the gap, and especially me as an advocate, then how do we then leverage the position we're in after having the platform and the documentary. And it was pretty much, we got our ratings, we got our marketing dollars, we got our numbers, goodbye, see you, whatever happens, happens. They put you in the promo for season two. Are you okay with that? No, I'm not. And they have a lawsuit coming their way because I told them, I vehemently, I will not, will not be a part of in any shape, form, or fashion. I did not sign any release forms. I told them I will not film. I'm not putting my name on this documentary. Not only do I not advocate what they're doing, Harvey, no disrespect, but people like you who have a platform, during the month of October, no one even reached out to me about Domestic Violence Awareness Month and what I'm doing in my advocacy, yet everyone wants to interview me when it's some bullshit about him. Everyone says, why did Drea just talk about R. Kelly? It's not that Drea just continues to talk about R. Kelly. That's what media and the platform continue to ask me. Now, if you want to really interview and know Drea and what she does and why I did that documentary, then start asking me questions about my advocacy and the work that I do, not only in the U.S., but abroad. All right, so you guys just saw what Drea Kelly had to say. So now this is my issue with all of this mess here, okay? The fact that they're doing a part two. There was more than enough information in part one. There was more than enough salaciousness, gossip, and all that shit in part one where a part two is not needed. At this point in time, Dream Hampton, Lifetime, they're just looking to ride this gravy train. It's not about the girls. It's not about the victim. It's about people milking this situation for a check, okay? And before you say, well, T, you're talking about it, you know what I'm saying? I, none of these R. Kelly videos are monetized, so kiss my ass, okay? I'm doing this for free. This is charity, Okay, <laughs> so I feel like they're just more concerned with ratings and a check and that's it. It's not about the victims at this point because a part two was not needed. Let the criminal justice system do their job. At this point, all y'all are looking like attention whores and money grabbers. But what's funny is that Lifetime has the energy to make a part two. Oprah Winfrey 
who I respect, you know, as a journalist and somebody I grew up watching, has the money and energy to create a docu series about all the women who have filed char- who have filed rape charges against Russell Simmons. And I've been calling out Russell Simmons for years on my channel, okay? So she's putting out a documentary to basically blast Russell Simmons. They're doing like an R. Kelly type thing on Russell Simmons and Oprah Winfrey's behind that, okay? But what bothers me with this situation, like I always tell y'all, what's good for the goose is good for the damn gander. And what I find very funny is that we have two R. Kelly, two surviving R. Kelly documentaries, right? We have a Russell Simmons documentary coming out, right? But where's the Harvey Weinstein documentary that's backed by Lifetime, that's backed by Oprah Winfrey? Matter of fact, we just posted the other day on Instagram that Harvey Weinstein got off. He reached a tentative $25 million deal with his victims. He will not have to serve any time in prison. Meanwhile, Bill Cosby was accused of rape and, and you know, groping people and, and dropping quaaludes in their drinks 30-something years ago. Right now, he's sitting his ass in prison fighting over some stale-ass pudding pops. Meanwhile, Harvey Weinstein is free to do whatever, and a lot of his cases were as recent as not even three years ago. So that's my issue with this situation. I don't care how many times y'all want to make documentaries on R. Kelly, but why has no one said anything? How come nobody with the power like Oprah or, you know, with the power of Lifetime, you know, network made anything on Harvey Weinstein? But yet and still, Oprah could also do Surviving Neverland. I just see a lot of racial bias. I'm not saying these men are innocent. I'm not taking up for R. Kelly because y'all know I've been keeping my foot on his neck from day one, okay? I'm not saying Russell Simmons is innocent because I've been keeping my foot on his ass from day one when everything came out. My issue is it's not fair across the board, and that's what I don't like. So we can make a part two on R. Kelly, but there's not even a part one on Harvey Weinstein. And a lot of people are seeing through the bullshit. 50 Cent even called out Oprah the other day. He drug her ass. I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. 50 Cent says, I don't understand why Oprah is going after black men. No Harvey Weinstein, no Epstein, just Michael Jackson and Russell Simmons. This shit is sad. Gail hit R. Kelly with the death row documentary. Every time I hear Michael Jackson, I don't know whether to dance or think about the little boy's butts. These documentaries are publicly convincing their target. It makes them look guilty till proven innocent. So that is what um, 50 Cent said. So a lot of people are seeing the bullshit in this. You know, Andrea is only wanting to sue because once again, she wants attention. All of a sudden now she wants to distance herself from the same documentary that she promoted, that she benefited from. But because she didn't benefit in a way that she thought she would, now she has an issue. If Lifetime used you, Drea, you're no different because you used those girls to go on to Lifetime. You paraded them to Lifetime. You talked them into telling their stories to Lifetime. So you use them just as much. R. Kelly's not innocent, but many of these people, many of these enablers were not innocent as well. Instead of naming it Surviving R. Kelly 2, how about you name it R. Kelly's Enablers, starting with Drea Kelly, starting with the manager who sat there and admitted, because I have his video evidence, that he admitted that he took Aaliyah to go lie about her age to go get her fake ID. Now he's trying to distance himself. And now those new charges are being brought against R. Kelly. So like I told you guys a year ago, the reason why all these people are singing and distancing themselves is because they knew that those charges were coming down, R. Kelly was going down, and now everybody's trying to save themselves. Even though they sat by for years and watched this take place. Had Aaliyah's parents, I'm calling them out too, had Aaliyah's parents and her damn uncle not pimped her out and put their foot down when they found out that R. Kelly was fucking their 15-year-old daughter? Had they actually pressed charges and done what they had to do as parents instead of being enamored by the glitz and glamours of the industry? There wouldn't have been all these victims. Sparkle's niece wouldn't have been a victim. None of these women, these so-called victims, would have been a victim had Aaliyah's parents handled their business as opposed to trying to brush shit under the rug because her being famous was more important than their daughter's well-being and mental health. Let's talk about it. I'm hot. See, people don't want to talk about that. Then we see Dame Dash in the documentary. What you in the documentary for, bruh? Weren't you in the Fiesta video with R. Kelly two-stepping, getting a bag? Now all of a sudden you're, you're, you're like trying to jump ship and be the good guy? Whoever's acting like they didn't know is lying. You knew R. Kelly fucked Aaliyah. You knew what went down. Now everybody's trying to distance themselves. But see, we're children of the 90s. We watched all this shit play out. So you can fool these 2000s kids, like my children's ages, but you can't fool us in our 30s and 40s, honey. 
I see through all this bullshit and I'm not here for it. Let the criminal justice system do what they need to do to R. Kelly. All this other stuff to me is nothing more than a money grab. Point blank, period. I said what I said. I'm out. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can be down with the notification squad. I want to know your opinions on this whole surviving R. Kelly fiasco part two. Drea Connor herself trying to sue because she's in her feelings because the shit didn't work out the way she thought it would. And then how do you feel about all these people jumping on this whole R. Kelly train? Trying to tell their story. Trying to distance themselves. How do y'all feel about Oprah Winfrey now coming out with the Russell Simmons documentary? How do you feel about what 50 Cent had to say about her? Let's go ahead and talk about it. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces.